Okay, let's uh, talk about a couple of these. You're going to hand this homework in today, as as uh, we do today. What's your, see if we can get consensus on ones we want to talk about. So are there are four problems. Yeah. Are there two? Can we? There's two of them that would be most popular to talk about. Two of these. Forty-four. Forty-four. Yeah. 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 Forty-four. Okay. Forty-nine. So I think what I'm hearing is forty-four for sure. Yeah. And then maybe forty-five or forty-nine. So let's vote on one of those. Oh, I'm off the screen again. So let's vote on one of those two. So either 45 or 49. All in favor of 45. All in favor of 49. <laughs> Seems like 49 is a little better. We'll try it again. All in favor of 45. 49. 49's have it. Okay, let's turn it in. Make sure you get the folding right and the heading right. Don't be careless. Okay, so let's look at 44. So 44 is basically a continuation of 43. So um, if you watch the videos in red, you found out that, and we also talked about it briefly on Wednesday, if you have 5% APR compounded monthly, then how would you find your monthly rate? How would you find the monthly rate? That's actually what 43 is asking for. So the monthly rate would be what? Um, divided by 12, or raised to 12. Which one is it? Oh, it's divided by 12. It would be 0.05. And this kind of violates the whole thing that we built up about percent change, right? This is the one situation where banks do it, they, they have this different way of handling percent change. We know that with percent change, it's for for actual, the way things actually grow exponentially, you've got to go through growth factors to get a, a transition of, of percent change, right? But with, um, with compound interest, you just, this APR is really never truly what your year, it's never truly what you earn per year unless you just have annual compounding, okay? So if you're compounding any more frequently than annually, then your APR is never really what your return is. It's never really the true percent growth for the year. Okay, So we start with a monthly rate, which would be 0.05 to the 12th, and then 44 would say, now what's the growth factor, in this case, what's the growth factor per month? So the growth factor per month, or per period, what would it be? It would be 1 plus the 0.05 over 12. Yeah, what, what is this 0.05 over 12? Let's find that number. Yeah, let's find the value. Point zero zero. Point zero zero four two. Four two five. Point zero zero four one six. Four one seven. Four one seven. So, what percent per month is your money going to grow then? What percent per month? Point four one seven percent per month. That's a true measure of how your money is growing. The five percent per year is not because of because of doing this because of dividing by twelve. But now this is our first true measure of how our money is growing. Point four one seven percent per month. So then, what's the growth factor associated with that? One point zero zero four one seven or one plus that. So now, how do we get the annual, this is annual growth factor? Yep, so we're going to do, we're going to raise it to the 12th. And so when I raise that to the 12th, what do I get? So now what's the APY? The APY is the true 
percent increase of our money. That's the true per year. We said five percent is not going to be. It's not going to be the true percent increase. The APY will be. Okay. So what's the given that growth factor annually? What's the true percent increase? Five point one two percent. Am I off the screen? No, still on. Does this make sense? This this is this is how we go through it. So let's do let's do daily. So daily. What's our so then what's the daily rate? 3.2% APR. If we compound any more than once per year, we're not going to earn 3.2% per year. If we compound more often, we're going to earn a little bit more than that. So we start with getting the daily rate. What's the daily rate? 0.032. Over, okay, that's going to be really small, right? What is it? Point zero, zero, probably at least three zeros. Is there another zero? Four zeros. Four zeros. Eight seven seven. Let's do eight seven seven. Okay. So, what's the percent? So this is. What's our percent? So that's our monthly rate. What is that as a percent? So what percent? Point zero. Two zeros eight seven seven, right? If it's a percent, we put the decimal there. Yeah. So that as a percent, it's point zero zero eight seven seven percent increase per day. Is that a true increase or not a true increase? It's truly per day. Okay. So what? would our multiplier be per day. So how would we get the new amount of money? What would we multiply by? That's our daily growth factor, which is? One. Adding one to that. OK, so how do we get the annual growth factor? Right, so it would be we'd multiply by that number 365 times, once for each day, right? Repeated multiplication of the growth factor. Raise it to the 365, and you get 1.0325. Yeah. So, what's our true yield or our actual percent increase per year? So, that was A and C. Hourly? No thanks. Okay. But let's generalize this, okay? This is and this is that video I asked you to watch twice. It's really important. So what do we start with? Our APR we call the APR we call R. So to get the per period rate, which is this first column here, what do we do to the APR? Because N is how many times we Compound per year. So R over N is your per period rate. Then how would we get the per period growth factor? That's the per period rate. This is really important. Just going to do 1 plus R over N, right? This is the multiplier to get us the amount of money we would have one period later, right? This is the, this is the multiplier. Now we want to get the annual multiplier or the annual growth factor. What do we do to that? How many times per year are we going to compound? So that's how many times we would multiply by that per period growth factor. So that's our annual growth factor. And then how would you get the APY? You've got the annual growth factor. Yep, so you take off the 1, we get rid of the 1, and we multiply by 100. Okay, then from there, how, from this growth factor, how would we get a t-year growth factor? So suppose we wanted to know how much our money was worth after t years. Rolls the whole thing to the... Okay, so in past math courses, many of you have had 
the compound interest formula. And it was just a bunch of variables that you just plug the you plug the numbers into the variables. But now we see that it's it's all about growth factors, right? How many growth factors are present in that formula? Two. Two or three? Three. What's one plus r over n? That is r per period. Okay? If we raise that to the n, annual. And then if we raise that to the t, t years, right? So the one period growth factor, the annual growth factor inside the brackets, and the whole thing is the t year growth factor. And that's, and a growth factor is, in general, what is it? It's the multiplier. On, so in this case, it's the multiplier on our on our initial amount called the principal. So if you have your initial amount and you multiply it by the t-year growth factor, it'll give you how much your money's worth t years later. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're multiplying the principal times the t-year growth factor. It'll tell us how much our money's worth t years later if our APR is r and our number of compoundings per year is n. So you got to know that. You got to understand <coughs> this is a really good problem. You work through some numbers and then understand the generalization. Really that's this this working through these numbers, numbers 43 and 44 is is developing that formula for compound interest. Anybody have a question? So the exam will ask you questions to see if you understand that process, not just can you use this formula. Okay, you know you got to understand what the what the things mean in the formula and this process of building it up, not just using the formula. Questions on these two? Further questions? Anybody? Okay, and then I think we ended up on forty nine. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So you want a thousand the lottery? Decide your invest your money for ten years. Okay. So now we're just um, doing some different scenarios. What are we going to do with our 1,000? 14% interest per year. So what will the annual growth factor be? 1.14. And so we could just figure out how much we would have after one year. So what would we do with the 1.14? OK, and that would. Just we'd be back to 1.14. And then times it by our money to see how much we'll have a year later. So that's our one year growth factor times a thousand gives us 40. Okay. 13.5%, but comp oh, is it 10 years? Yeah. All right, so we're going to raise this to the 10th. Okay, so we will have compounding, but it'll only be every year. Tell me what that is. Three seven. Zero seven. Okay, in ten years, three thousand seven hundred seven twenty-two. Okay. Account number two pays 13.5% interest, but this is compounded monthly. Okay, so let's let's just go through the process real fast. What is the monthly growth factor? The monthly growth factor. One plus, plus point. Point 0.135. Is that it? Yeah, divided by 12. There's our monthly growth factor. Annual growth factor. Right? We're going to multiply it by 12 times. And then we want the 10 year growth factor. Raise it to the 10th. And then we're going to, that's our multiplier for 10 years. So we're going to multiply it by 1,000. 1 month growth factor, 1 year growth factor, 10 year growth factor. Make sure you understand all that. And again, not. You gotta know more than just how to plug these numbers into the formula. 
What do we got? 3,828.46. Okay, but I thought this was a lower interest rate. You're compounding it more. Right. So in this case, the compounding has a greater effect than that reduction in 0.5% of the APR. Okay. So the APR makes it lower, but the monthly makes it higher, and the, month, the compounding monthly was... Uh, Compensated, overcompensated for this reduction in the APR. So this is better. So then weekly, we would have 0.13 over 52, and that would be our one week growth factor. We, what would we raise it to to get the annual growth factor? To the 52. And then the, again, the 10 year growth factor to the 10. So this would be different by, this would be 52 here. This would just be 0.13. That would be 52. And when you make those changes, it's still 1,000, still 10 years. What's the 52, or sorry, the 10 year amount at 52? 3,600 something. Okay, so this time reducing that percent rate that much was a bigger reduction than what we gain back by compounding more often. Even in fact, that's even that's even worse than our just our annual compounding. So best deal. Okay, any more questions on the homework? Are we good? Um, yeah, please. The B part, how would you describe it? That's kind of where I was confused. I mean, we just say the annual growth factor is this, which means your money increases by something percent per year. Perfect. So this one, this one, we're really increasing. The money increases in value how often? Once a year. Once a year. We multiply by 1.14, which indicates 14% increase. This one... How does our money go up? Uh, Goes up. Thirteen point five percent. Well, no, that weird growth factor. Yep, it's going to go up. This one every month. That's how our money grows. Monthly, it's going to go up that percent. Okay. Or we multiply by that. And then the last one, weekly, it's going to go up by if you have point one three and divide by fifty two, then weekly it's going to go up by that percent. Well, it's kind of the test of the of the greatest understanding. To be able to to, to be able to write it out in a coherent sentence um, is reflects the, the greatest understanding you can have. So that's why you're asked to do that often. Because you really gotta think about it how how to word it. If you really understand it, then the wording shouldn't be too hard. Okay. So you, um, as part of the work you did, well, let's just review this here quickly. So here's our formula. So R over N, first thing R over N stands for? Percent increase per year, is that right? No. no. Percent increase per, 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 per period, whether that's a month or a quarter. Okay, add the one to it. We get the one period growth factor. So they're calling it the one over n unit. Okay, I think I like one period better. It's the one period growth factor. Raise that to the n, that's your annual growth factor. Raise that to the t, that's your t year growth factor. So here's just an example. This is what we've been talking about. So that's your monthly growth factor. To the twelfth is the annual growth factor. And we see a, a percent change of this is the APY. 
APY, is that the true amount your money increases? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's APY. the true amount. The APR is the 6%. So it's the 6% combined with monthly compounding that gives you the true increase, the APY of 6.2%. And that comes from that growth factor. So the APY is the 10 year growth factor? No, it's the true percent per year, annual percent yield. So APY stands for annual percent yield. And so yield meaning the actual, that's what APY stands for. Yield meaning the true percent that your money goes up every year, every annual period. Notice it's a little bit greater than the APR, which is 6%. So your annual percentage rate, if you have compounding, is not what you make on your money. The APY is, and we, we get that through the growth factors. Got it? Okay, so you should, should have made this table, is that right? So you can well, collect the homework, check your numbers, see if it agrees. If it doesn't, figure out what went wrong. Page is that? Uh, 157 on here. Yeah. Well, the last two, they were the same. Okay, just if you didn't do it, don't don't just fill in the numbers. That's besides the point. Well, can we go over? Yeah, we can go over a little bit of it, but don't just sit here and copy down the numbers. That's 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 not a worthwhile exercise. Think about and do a little bit of it if you didn't do any of it. Okay, but you should have done this. This is part of your assignment. Oh, it's probably more. Thank you. Yeah, so, I don't know. Don't know. We'll do one of those maybe. Anybody else? Okay, so the point of this table is that for the same APR, <coughs> what happens as you compound more often? Uh, you get more money. Your return is better, right? So this we know the APY is your actual return. So for the same APR, compounding more often increases your percent, your actual percent yield or your actual return. Okay, so the more often that you compound, does that amount of of your return just just go off to infinity? No. What seems to be happening here? What's the what's the pattern? What do you see? It increases slower and slower. Yeah, it's increasing. It's kind of like so hourly. It's like can we do any better than hourly? Well, yeah, we can do minutes, but we looking at the pattern, we do it every minute or every second. We would expect that it would go up really hardly anything after this. So it is going up, but it's kind of converging at a, at a kind of a best rate. And the best rate you could get would be kind of like compounding. How can you do better than every second? Every half a second. Every half a second. You could do better than that. Every so it's kind of like every moment. Every moment. So So as we compound more and more often, we're really con converging on some percent rate that's like 
the APY for compounding every moment. That does not make your money go to infinity, right? That's the pattern we're seeing here. It's like converging on something around 8.33. Okay? If we, if we were able to compound every single moment. Okay? This is called continuous compounding. Okay, and so if we were to compound every moment, what would the value of n be? So what we know our formula is, we know our formula for after t years. What are they calling the initial amount? Are they calling it p or a? a. Are they calling it a? little a? Little a. Little a, okay. So our initial amount is little a. All right, so then we got the 1 plus r over n. We talked about what all this means to the n to the t. If we were to compound every moment, what would the value of n be? He wants the number of moments in a year. Is that what it would be? n. Can you do yeah. seconds? Okay, so we could do seconds, and we could actually we'd have some number of seconds. But every single moment, n would be like what? Big number or small number? Small number? Small. N? Right, so what is N for? What's N for quarterly? <coughs> Four. Four. 12. 365. 365 times 24. All right, so what about for every moment? It's like N is going to infinity. infinity. Yeah. We're chopping up the year into an infinite number of time periods, which we're calling infinitely small moments. Okay? So, this breaks down. We can't plug infinity in, right? We can't take r divided by infinity and raise it to the infinity. Okay? So it breaks down. So what happens is we get a new formula for this particular case called continuous compounding. And that new formula is this, at equals, we have the same a, e to the rt. So let's, let's try this out for this situation. So what is our a? $1,000. R, so it's kind of like the APR. But now it's combined with continuous compounding. So the R is? It's 0 0.08. Okay? And then let's just do, say, we'll just do five years. Okay? So make T5, and we'll be doing that last row in the table for a new column called continuous compounding. Do you have room on your book over here? You could, if you can you make... You, a little bit. You could make like a new column like for continuous compounding and we're going to find this one right here. We're going to find that value right there. For five years, a thousand dollars continuous compounding using this formula. So this E is a number and you have that built into your calculator. The number is 2.718 one, eight, two, eight, four, five, nine, zero, four, five. Oh, there's a little trick. Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson was, let's see, the seventh president. He served two terms. Well, now you're listening. <laughs> Andrew Jackson was the seventh president. He served two terms. One of them was in 1828. I'm not sure. The first one was in 18. The second one was 1828. And the rumor has it that he lived to 90 years old and he wore a 45 on each hip. 
<laughs> you asked. <laughs> but the point is, the point is, it's a number, okay? E is a number, like pi, it's a, it's a non-repeating infinitesimal, like the number pi, okay? So, it's, so it keeps going even after that. And maybe it has something to do with Andrew Jackson even more. Don't know. Okay? But it's a number. It's built into your calculator. You should have an E caret button. So it's waiting for an exponent. So you, if you push that button in your calculator, it's waiting for the exponent. In this case, you're gonna, your exponent is going to be 0 0.08 to APR times 5. You got it. It's also the same. It's close to it. Do, you get, do we even get one more penny? No. It's still 82 cents. Yeah. Yeah. Still 82 cents. Okay, so as you compound more and more often, this re return on your money converges to the best possible thing you could have, which is every moment. But we can't use this formula for every moment, so we have this new formula, which is our continuous compounding formula. So if you're interested in where this co formula comes from, that is that worksheet. Worksheet 7, okay, tells you the first part of Worksheet 7, kind of takes you through the mathematics of how we get from that original formula with these compounding amounts to the continuous compounding formula. Okay, so that's there for you to look at. Okay, so, <clears throat> any questions on that? So, what about the... What about the APY, continuous APY? It's virtually what? If this amount of money is the same, it's virtually the same as our hourly compounding. So 8.3, still 329% for continuous compounding. So once you get to hourly, it's virtually the same as continuously. The real jump in your money is when you first, like this is the biggest jump, right? from yearly to quarterly. That's when you get the best benefit. And then more often, the benefit, the increased benefit shrinks fast. Okay, any questions about that formula? What the, so far, just using that for E or your calculator or anything, anybody? Yeah, yeah, what every part is. Not where E comes from, no, not where E comes from. But what every part of this formula is for sure. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that more today. So what's the question? What's that? What was the question you asked at that point? Do you understand what all the parts are? A, E, R, and T. A is your initial amount. E is this number that is this number that just occurs in nature associated with this continuous, continuous compound compounding effect, it's just, and then R is your, like the APR, but now we're using it as the continue, what's called the continuous rate, and then T is the number of years. Okay, so notice that that is a lot like, our original, so what is our original formula for Exponential growth. So here's the one we just did, A, E to the R, T. We all should be able to write down, if T is the input, what is our basic exponential growth function? Who knows? So don't say it out loud. But we spent the first couple of weeks on exponential growth working with our basic exponential growth function. So hopefully you should all be able to write down what that is. So give it a shot. How many people think they know? Raise your hand if you think you know what it is. Oh, that's kind of scary. How does an initial amount grow? Exponentially. Yeah. 
Well, not x, though, in this case. We have an initial amount to get, if we want the amount one unit later, what do we do to that initial amount to get the amount one unit later? Multiply it by b, the growth factor. Remember, the growth factor is our multiplier. If we want to know how much that initial amount is worth three units later, what do we multiply it times? Times three? Yeah. Times b three times, or b cubed. What about 10 times, 10 units of t later? To the 10th. What about t units later? There's our exponential growth formula, a, b to the t. Remember the tables? Remember multiplying the output by b to get the next output. We want to jump ahead t units of output. We multiply by b t times. That's what's going on in that formula. Okay, so let's match things up here. So now this is for continuous growth, which is just another way to look at exponential growth. Still growing exponentially. We're just it's like looking at a different perspective of it. So let's match things up. What do you see here that matches up? <coughs> a. So A matches up. A is our initial amount in both cases. What else matches up? T. T. The exponent T. So that leaves what? B. So what is like B in the continuous growth formula? E to the R. You see that? So B equals E to the R. All right, so again, what is B? What is B in our basic exponential growth? E to the R. No, in basic, what does it mean? It's the one unit growth factor. We know E is a number. What is R? The continuous, so here, here we call it the continuous rate. Is it your true return per unit? No. Okay, so, so let's go back to this example. What was R for this example? 0 0.08. So we've got this very important thing where B, our growth factor, our actual growth factor, equals E to the R, our continuous rate. Okay, so I want you to now find, for this situation, what will E to the R be? So just plug in your calculator and find E to the R. E to the point zero 0.08. What is it? 1.0832 what? 87. Okay. And what is that's equal to now? We know that's equal to the actual growth factor. What's the true percent increase? There it is. 8.3287. This is this is rounded, okay? So this is less. This should be actually leaving less than that. So it's probably 86 or something. Rounded up to 0 0.9. Okay? So if you have the continuous rate, you do e to the r, you get the true one unit growth factor which gives you from the true one unit growth factor, we get the true percent increase. And that's our in this case and with money, that's our APY. Did you catch it? You see what happened? Really important principle here. So this is viewing, it's the, this is the exact same growth. This is just viewing it as continuous growth and just viewing it as our old school, the way we did before, just the um, plain exponential growth. Really important.
Okay, so let's just review. So therefore, since y equals a b to the t, b equals e to the r. That's what we said. Okay, so if r is positive, that's like an APR, like the positive, then, then r is called the continuous growth rate. And if r is negative, it's called the continuous decay rate. So let's say that r was... Let's do a little, short little example here. If r is negative 0 0.25, what does that indicate? So what is that indicating? Is that indicating a decrease of 25% per unit? No, this is the continuous decay rate, which needs to be combined with continuous compounding to get the actual... percent decre decrease. So to find the actual percent decrease, we can use this. So find B, which is E to the negative 0.25. And what do you get for B? So we're, we're good with these growth. This is a, uh, a growth factor or a decay factor? decay factor, and what is the percent decrease, the true percent decrease? Okay, remember, with decay factors, the, that decay factor indicates, what does that number indicate? How much we, what portion that we keep. Decay factors indicate the portion that we keep, so the amount of decrease is... One minus that, which is, what'd you say again? So how, what percent is this truly going down every unit? Is it going down 25% every unit or 22.1% every unit? It's truly going down 22.1% every unit. So what does this 25% decay rate mean? It's... It's the continuous rate such that if you combine it with continuous compounding, the real result is that the quantity goes down, truly goes down that much per unit. All right, let's see if we've got time for one example here. Why don't you look on page... Flip. Way ahead, page 176, and do number...
Okay, what about the number negative point zero one four two? Is it that's how much they are losing each month? Okay, that's how much they're losing each month. Yes or no? One point four two percent. They lose one point four two percent per month. The nominal rate for taking to the county Yeah, that's not the amount they lose per month, right? That's not the amount they lose per month. This is called the if this is right, it's it's our very low value of R. It's the continuous decay rate. Of negative one point four two percent. But it it's the continuous decay rate. It has to be combined with this moment by moment compounding effect to get the actual decay rate. And how are we going to find the actual decay rate? We raise, the, we raise B to the negative 0 0.0142. B equals E to the R. Okay? B is our true growth factor. It equals E to the continuous rate. So E to the negative 0 0.0142 equals... 0.986. Is there another decimal there? 985 something? 59. Okay, 5.9. This is the decay rate. How do we get the percent decrease? 1 minus that. 1 minus that gives us what percent decrease? 1.41%. 1 Okay, that's the true percent decrease per month, which comes from the true decay factor, B. The continuous rate, it's the rate such that when combined with the continuous compounding effect, results in the true percent decrease, negative 1.41, which you're going to get from B, the decay factor, the true decay factor. So the, the function, rewritten function is? So we could rewrite this function as? 8.3.9859 raised to the m. That's how you could rewrite that. So it's the exact same formula. This is just viewed as a continuous rate and then viewed as just a decay factor. Okay, so we'll do a, a, another short homework for Wednesday and be back on track on Wednesday homeworks. So I'll post a short, short written homework for Wednesday.